this is the motor controller in my 9x20 running a, you know, I'm guessing that's roughly a two horse motor. Okay, this is the controller board. I'll see if I can add some uh, stills to it as well. So we've got two wires for the DC drive. They're going to uh, A1 and A2. You can see there's a bunch of options here that uh, aren't even being used. And I really don't know much about this. I'm just documenting it in case somebody else uh, has one similar. So the DC went there. We have uh, black from 110 volt AC. Going upside down here. Let's turn around a bit. Okay, so that 110, that goes down to line one. And you can see this board would handle 240, but no guarantees the components are in there to handle 240, so I wouldn't just hook it up. Okay, so there's the second wire, white. That's going down to L2. That's also from the 110 in. And then there's our ground. And I'm assuming this is a braking resistor. Not exactly sure. Uh, I would think this would be the power supply over here, so it's. I would guess it's probably more part of the voltage regulation. I'm assuming that's the stock heat sink that uh, came with the treadmill. And he basically just found a box to mount it in. These three wires here, they come up to this 9 pin. Now, I haven't untaped that, but I'm guessing that he's either soldered it to two plugs, to two uh, connectors in there, because we have five coming out. So the red and green, again, I'm guessing uh, part of the, um, basically the on-off and telling it direction, okay? Because they, they all go up the umbilical there. And if this doesn't come out, I'll put a still up. But uh, can you even see that? I can't see the camera <laughs> viewfinder from that angle, so. Uh, oh, yeah, I guess you can. I changed it. So you can see that uh, the red and green, uh, well, one goes to speed and one uh, goes up to the jog switch. Uh, and the one on the left there is the constant run. Okay, so that... that uh, selects it whether or not it's a constant run or jog and then the button on the right there does the uh, the jog feature that's the momentary push button then there's your speed control and all of the wires on the back side of those switches I haven't looked at them too close but uh, let's see here the right one is forward and reverse and the left one there is on and off so and I need to take that back apart. I may get more video later. Uh, I noticed a couple of the wires aren't attached very well, so I should probably try to uh, fix that while I'm in fixing mode, because once I start using it, it'll break when I want it. I want to use it, want to need it. That'll, uh, that'll be annoying as hell. I think what I came up with here is I'm just going to uh, use the brackets that are already on this, and rather than mount it this way, because I don't want... I really don't want to have to worry about chips getting on here, okay? Uh, there is enough cable there. I can mount it there. Now, uh, let's make sure I take the twist out of it. Maybe. Okay. Yeah, and I could put a wire tie up here, even right here, to make sure that it doesn't wander over into the the motor thing there so I think we're uh, I think we're okay right there let's see if I can get lucky oh apparently that bracket's not taken 
down. <laughs> Okay, I like that. This will pretty much be up against the paint cabinet when it gets tucked back in there, so I don't have to worry about uh, you know running against it. It's not like it's going to be sitting right here, so I don't have to worry about hitting equipment or jacks or anything like that against it. So that ought to work fine. Let's uh, we'll put the cover back on and move on to the next. I've, I've done some mocking up with, uh, and have an idea where I want to go, but uh, with the back and the controller and stuff. But uh, I need to get in here and get that uh, shield made uh, before I get too buried. I don't want to mount anything else back here or set anything up and plug it in until I get that done. Then I need to put the cover on here too and uh, make sure stuff clears. I'm also thinking too, I might just take a piece of this and and run it across the back here and then put it inside the lip and then that way like when I blow uh, blow chips around or anything like that I won't get a bunch coming up through the opening in here so now I don't know a thing about uh, tin work anything like that so I'm just kind of hoping to hodgepodge something together close enough to do what I needed to do. So I know I need something roughly about five inches. There's a little bit of a lip in there. I might be able to uh, put a couple holes in and rivet it to it. Not quite sure yet, but straight enough what I'm doing. my electric shears but uh, I forgot the uh, blades are still broken. And they make aviation tin snips. I've got so many other Harbor Freight tools you'd think I'd have a pair of those but I don't. There's why I'm trying to protect it. Okay, you got to be careful you don't cut the wiring with the sharp edges. So that needs to get bent back and preferably go under the the lip there. Um, I can only go to the right until I hit the uh, motor mount. And I think it's tall enough. I don't want it hanging all the way down to the bottom there. Um, because when I go to sweep my hand under there or whatever to do chips. I don't want to <laughs> have it in the way and rip myself open kind of thing, so it's, uh, God, it's going to be a little creative bending, bending there, because I need it back behind this lip. I need it back behind this lip here in order to uh, let the carriage, you know, and the DRO and stuff like that uh, clear. Well, I cut the top at an angle there to match... Uh, what was going into there. That probably should have been bent on a bit of an angle. Um, I think it'll stretch around. The challenge is getting kind of a dimple in here uh, so that when the DRO comes in here uh, there's a little bit more clearance, so I can I can help hold this back some, but I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to bend some kind of kink in there or something. Uh, so we'll see. I, I've got a little bit of room to uh, move to not bring the DR in DRO ah, DRO the slide the scale the saddle, not to bring it in quite so far. So I think what I'm gonna try to do is uh, get a rivet in down here to hold that back this direction. Uh, it's actually stuck in there right now because it went up over the bottom lip of the motor mount. And, uh, <laughs> it's actually stuck in there. 
Then I'm going to see if I can't get another rivet right up in here under that flange. Between the two, that ought to be fine. Um, you know, it'll stay in... It's not going anywhere. I'll bend some of the edges over and stuff like that so I don't have any sharp points or I'll cut them. Um, so now the question is, i got to get a drill, uh, find out what size I need for the, uh, for the rivet, and drill a couple coals, see if I can get it attached in there. If I can, then uh, yay! It isn't something I wanted to waste a lot of time on. Now we'll see if these do the trick. You know, a lot of people look at these like they're, their toy is not all that handy, but this is one of those cases where, you know, I could not get a regular set of ice grips in here to hold that. So, you know, normal size pair. So let's see if this works. I had already drilled the, uh, the first hole, so I guess I need a rivet gun. Oh! So I'm pretty happy with that. The uh, washers are nice and tight. Right? Oh yeah, that thing doesn't want to move at all on there. So, perfect. I can live with that. Let's see if we can get another one up on the top there. Okay, let's walk around and see how it looks. There is no way for anything to get to that motor, because back in there the motor's sealed, you know, up at that end anyway, so I'm not too worried about that. Let's, uh, let's see how we're doing here. Might need to push that around a little bit to, uh, oh yeah. Perfect. I'm not actually touching, but I did bottom out on the thing, which is, you know, on the spacer there, that nut I made for the ball screw cover. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I'm going to call that good. Uh, well, I'll go back and trim the edge and bend the corners over that stuff, make it a little safer. But uh, positioning-wise, that's that's perfect. I'll, uh, I'll take that any day. You can see I just folded that over. No big deal there. So basically, I just, you know, folded it up as, uh, as I could, and it, it goes the same way all the way under there. So, you know, now, if I happen to come in here and catch this while I'm reaching through, it's not going to uh, rip my hand open or anything like that. I got clearance on the motor. Uh, I didn't have to, to tape off or block any of the cooling. I mounted up the end uh, guard here, the belt guard and that stuff, put the hinge on. First, I put it on the inside and then wondered why it didn't close correctly. Uh, so I mounted it to the back side. I'm pretty sure it was on the front side when I got it. I'll have to go back and look at other pictures. But uh, uh, anyway, when I was putting it back together, I noticed that uh, I saw this knurled head here. I thought, well, that's kind of strange. Let me look at it. Oh, yeah, I think you can see that. Yep. So that's threaded. So that's kind of nice. Uh, maybe everybody else with these machines knew that, but uh, I didn't. 